Doesn't matter if you're feeling it yet. Tough times are here. It's starting another pocket. It's coming to you soon. Better stick around for this one. This is pretty important. Hey guys, Pete here, HVAC Greatness. Was out sick, did some traveling, but I'm back. So if you missed me, <laughs> you probably didn't. But I'll never even do I left, right? So I wanted to talk about something really important. We're into the new year at the time of this recording, and we're already starting to see some stuff happen out there. It's gonna get tight, guys, it's gonna get ugly. But listen, there is a way to survive this Actually, there's a way to thrive instead of survive, which sounds a lot better, doesn't it? So let's talk about a few of these things and what's going on. I saw a post by uh, somebody who does training for heating and air conditioning companies. <clears throat> and he's talking about these salespeople that are just like having a hard time right now. They've created these lifestyles, right? Multiple mortgages and things like this, and they just can't seem to get the sales that they're used to. You see, HVAC, the HVAC business model made a drastic change that I've seen over the 40 plus years that I've been doing this, kind of watching this stuff. And it's not the healthiest. I mean, it's it was a more profitable change, but it wasn't the healthiest change. And so what's happened is we've seen this pendulum shift over to let's change equipment out, let's change equipment out. So. We've seen the quality of the equipment go down. They don't seem to last as long. So we're seeing more and more replacement. And we're seeing HVAC business owners and management lean heavily towards replacement when that may not necessarily be in the customer's best interest. I, I don't want to insinuate, but it's become about profits. It's become about keeping those GP high. Well, that's changed and it's continuing to change because the customer's pushing back. They have to. The economy's different now. Things are getting tighter. We've got some, we've probably got a good drop right in front of us waiting to happen at any time. And uh, then everybody's gonna feel it. So what does that mean to you? In your case, it doesn't matter if you're a one-man truck or you've got a fleet out there, you need to revisit your business strategy and take into consideration that the customer mindset has changed. This means that your strategy must adjust to that so that you can thrive in a business in a time where business is getting tighter and more difficult. They still need services. They're just going to change how they go about acquiring those services. They're going to ch their priorities have changed. What they're asking for has changed, and a lot of the things that we take for granted uh, are not going to be there anymore. Okay, so we're, we're going to see some changes here. So <clears throat> let's talk about the primary business model that has been around for years. So what that has looked like was this. The weather drives uh, equipment um, strain. Failures result or lack of performance result or high utility bills result and it initiates a call to you. You go out there and you either A, repair what's broken in the system or B, replace the system altogether. And so it's been a situation of repair or replace. Well, the strategy has been, and it was a good one, let's put in a maintenance agreement so that when they do need to replace or they do need to repair, they think of us. We give them discounts, we give them priority services, we give them a number of different reasons to call us. Trust, a good relationship, things like that. Okay, so that model probably needs to be revisited and maybe not completely changed, but definitely modified. Because if you're sitting around waiting for repairs and you're sitting around waiting on replacement, um, you're reactive in your business and not proactive, which means you're kind of letting the weather do its thing like, like they did years ago and they're crying in between in the shoulder seasons when there's not enough work. And you know the story, right? So what can we do different? Well, number one, what we need to do is be realistic about the level of service that we're offering 
on our maintenance agreements. I think that maintenance agreements have been overpromised and underdelivered. So what they do is they they you know who they are. They sell these maintenance agreement programs for roughly let's say two hundred and fifty dollars a year, right? Or two hundred and forty dollars a year for easy math. That's about twenty dollars a month. So for one hundred and twenty dollars, they send a technician or a junior technician out, and they do a maintenance on the equipment. And so, generally, dust and dirt build up rather quickly, and so we see we see a build up of of dust on the evaporator, on the condenser, on any of the internal components, heat exchanger, the the strip heat. Definitely the blower, uh, all these different things. Okay, so dust is the enemy, and I don't know if you know the statistic or not, but the typical home, all of the air inside of it. I mean, from the floor to the ceiling, from wall to walls, those cubic feet, the entire house will circulate through that furnace or air handler about five to seven times for every one hour that is on. So the whole house is going through there all the time. Right, and so this means that dust and dirt buildup is inevitable. And we sell these maintenance agreements, and we say, you know, we're we're going to clean those for you. And some of you do. Some of you are out there cleaning, and you're losing money just for the hope that they'll give you that repair when it comes through, or just for the hope that they'll go to you when it's time for that replacement. So this is one of those lost leaders, if you will. We see that in retail all the time with stores and things like this. Um, and in most of you guys' case, you mean well and you're honest and you, you're going to do right. But there's dishonest loss leaders too. I mean, think about, I have a customer who does duct cleaning. And to do it right, and he does it right, he says, I break even around $850 to go clean a system. But the customers inevitably go for those duct cleaning companies that will do a, a $99 special or a $199 special. And But the thing is, it's a lost leader, and when you get out there, you don't get anything for that. They go through your system. By the time they're done, they've charged just as much as this gentleman, who was honest and upfront, would have charged to begin with, and you would have gotten a better job, right, because he's got superior equipment and, uh, and, and knowledgeable staff and, and things of this nature. <clears throat> so some lost leaders are, are, are healthy and good, others and honest, and others are not so much. You're going to see a lot of this going on in your market. There's going to be these promises of these low prices and everything else because people are going to be money sensitive. Among other things, they're money sensitive. And so if you're not aware and you're stuck in that old business model of just repair or replace and then do the maintenance agreement to hold that relationship in place, you're going to fall prey to that and you're going to start to drop your prices just so that you can keep your people busy. <clears throat> So part of your strategy has to take into account that there's a lot of data out there. We've learned a lot. And one of the things that we've learned about is that there's different types of customers and they have different sets of experiences, right? So if you encountered a customer whose furnace caught on fire once upon a time and smoked out the house and freaked them out, well, they are going to be a strong believer in safety checks on their heating system every single year as part of their maintenance program. They're going to be believers in it, and they're not going to miss one because they've had experience. Okay, <clears throat> A lot of your consumers out there, they really don't have any experience. The heating and air conditioning is kind of out of sight, out of mind, and it just runs. And so they just assume that it doesn't need the work that it does need and you and I know that it does need in fact a lot of us don't realize how important the cleaning of the equipment is because of the effect that it has on the heat transfer and therefore the performance the equipment's capacity the comfort its ability to dehumidify right there's a, a lot of things equipment lifespan a lot of things are really subtly affected and because <clears throat> we've been desensitized by this because we see dirty equipment all the time, oh, that's normal. Well, it may be normal, it may be common, but it's not right. And 
there's, there's been a lot of studies on this and keeping a system clean is really important. So if we were to go back and revisit the traditional model, what if we took our maintenance agreement and modified it and we're really straightforward and said, you know what, a deep chemical cleaning of your evaporator, of your condenser, or maybe the cleaning of your furnace, where we literally go in and we and we do a deep cleaning, that is gonna be an add-on to our traditional maintenance. So we can come out there at this low rate and we'll do basically performance and safety checkups and we'll, we'll look for anything and then we'll bring it to your attention as it needs to be done. And when it needs to be done, we do a deeper cleaning. Now, before you reject that, I, I want you to consider this example. Let's say that you and your wife and children are about to take your car, your seven-year-old car on a long trip, about a thousand miles away from where you're at. And to really make this interesting, let's say that you have to let your wife drive with your children the car because you have to take a flight out to another town and, and do some business, and then you'll meet them at that destination a thousand miles away. Are you going to let your wife and your children sit behind the seat of that car and drive that distance without having that vehicle gone through and check for safety and check for proper operation? Of course not. You're going to take the car in. You're going to have your tire, tires checked for proper pressure, proper tread, your belts, your hoses, your fluid levels, the all, all the, uh, the the motor's performance, the transmission, all of the safeties. That the water sprinkler comes on the front in case the mud slops up, it can rinse. You're going to check, have all of that checked and revised, and make sure that that vehicle is road ready to the best you can before sending her off on that long trip because you don't want your wife and family broken down on the side of the road. Well, this is what your customers are accustomed to and this is the way they look at sending their family into the cold season or into the hot season. They want the system gone through and all of these things checked properly. So a proper maintenance program really needs to factor this in. Do we really do a system check or we just kind of go in there and look and everything looks okay? What, why, why can't we check superheat and subcooling? Why can't we check static pressure? Why can't we check um, the, the, the furnace's combustion? And, and you, there's some great tools out there. Why can't we check all of these things and really go through and proactively say, hey, the contactors, contacts are showing pitting, is changing color before we go into the season. Let's go ahead and change that and put a new one in there so we know that's not going to break down in the middle of the summer, for example. These are called proactive repairs. And so that is a different strategy than what we've really not thought through with the old one. And so if you use your maintenance and the relationship to do other things beyond just wait on a breakdown or wait on the, the, it to be time to repl be replaced, then you're now you're proactively not only taking care of your business and you're able to generate more income, but you're really taking better care of your customer. So there's proactive repairs. There's the separation of a deep chemical cleaning, and when you do come to do one, you do it right. Maybe you're charging five, six hundred dollars at a, at a discounted rate to do a deep cleansing of that system. And maybe you need to do that every other year. Maybe you need to do it one, every other season or every other season. That would be every other year, wouldn't it? But you know what I'm saying. So whatever that situation is, you could literally come in, charge additional money for that, and, and, and treat that as a separate. You get a discount to get this, and it really depends on how much dust and stuff we're building up. Okay, so that that's that's one additional strategy, and it's a really good one, and it's an honest one. And if you haven't thought about that before, you may question that. But if you really play that scenario through in your mind, you'll see that this is this is fair to your company because you, you're if you go in and do these chemical cleanings and you're taking two three hours to really do a good job. I mean, what what should you be charging for that? What is your going rate? I mean, there's huge value in that. 
I mean, you can extend the, the life of the equipment substantially. You can reduce breakdowns substantially because most of these breakdowns are due indirectly to dirt and dust buildup. Stop and think about it. It's dirt and dust and crap that gets in there that usually leads to some of these breakdowns. There's other reasons as well. So that's a good strategy. Uh, looking at proactive repairs, uh, actually adding a line item for coil cleaning. And if you play out, and you, you sh I've got a class on this. If you play out the life uh, value of a customer and how many repairs you do in the term of the entire life, how many equipment change outs you do in the term of the entire life uh, uh, of working with that customer, and then factor in how many coil cleanings that you should be doing, you'll find that you make a lot more money in coal cleanings than you possibly realize. In fact, it will approach and be close to what you make on equipment replacement during that lifetime of the customer. Do the math, it's really interesting. Then there's some other strategies like uh, accessories and enhancements, IAQ and things like this, which have caught on and it's been part of the model too. But what we're suggesting is that during these times, as the customer is wanting to spend less, they're really wanting to spend money more intelligently. They're going to need your services. And if they don't know any better, if they don't have experience like those customers we talked about, like the, the customer that had a furnace catch on fire one time, they've had that experience and they know the importance of safety. These customers who have no experience and they think it should just run forever, well, they're not going to know any better. But there's a huge number of customers out there that we call experience-based customers. And they are experienced and they've had situations, they've had challenges with bad contractors. They ask for things like, I wanna make sure you're licensed and insured because that's their way of screening. And they think that because you're licensed and insured, that makes you okay. Well, you and I know better. There's a lot, a lot of licensed and insured incompetence out there or crooks out there, so let's say dishonest ones. Not most of them. Most of the people in our industry are, are good guys and gals, but they exist, right? They're, they're, there's these licensed and insured salesmen in, in uniform, right? and they're just gonna sell new equipment. So that's not the best way to measure that. So what we have to do is adjust our strategy to the new customer mindset and you become the solution to what they actually need. You become the solution to their potential problems, to their stressors, to their challenges. And you can only do that by having a long-term strategy and processes internally in your business that confirm or reaffirm the fact that they've made the right decision by going and doing business with you. And then on the front end, this is where the marketing, this is where your branding, this is where you need to be polished, you need to pop. That's really, really important. Realize this, those people out there want you because you're the best. They want you because you're more technically competent, but they don't measure you with that same metric. They measure you with the way you look. Do you look professional? Is your van well lettered and wrapped and professional? Is your technician in a uniform? Does he look professional? What does the vocabulary sound like as it comes out of his mouth? Does he go to the truck and get a part? You've heard me say this before, right? Or is he a professional who checks his service vehicle for the proper replacement component to put their system back into operation and, and, and test it, make sure it's at factory operating levels, for example. This is how a customer perceives professional work, and that's not gonna change. So you're gonna have to up your game. As we go into tougher and tougher times, you need to be more and more professional than ever. You need to be a marketing strategist and expert. It's not enough anymore to be a heating and air conditioning expert. This is business and the game has changed. Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness. Think about all that. Talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.
Hey, it's Pete. A quick thank you for joining me today on HVAC Greatness, or maybe just letting me keep you company as you're out running about. Either way, I sincerely hope that you picked up on something today that might help you and your business progress on your journey to HVAC Greatness. Want more? Make sure we stay on the air. Share the podcast with a friend, rate and review it, and be sure to subscribe to our email list at HVACGreatness.com so that you don't miss anything. This is Pete Ramsey signing out and reminding you why your customers love your business and what makes your company great in one word, you. So let's keep refining your already good image and make it truly great.